Hello friends, here's a quick, cool visual aid for everybody out there to show our priorities and what we care about in life and why they affect our decisions and why they affect our future and who we want to be and who we will eventually become. This represents, this yellow bean bag represents your martial art training. Now you can substitute this with anything out there. This is any type of activity that you might do or you wish to study outside of work and home. Okay, so this could be spending time at the gym or the, um, the local dance studio, playing baseball, whatever it might be, taking an extra college class to improve yourself. Uh, it's just some sort of external endeavor, okay? This, in my case, is representing martial arts because I get questions all the time about this from viewers and students alike. So here's our martial art training. This to me is very precious. So since I was about nine years old, I've always held this in high priority. My training for me, and we were just talking about this last night in class, um, me and Sensei Danes were talking about just how great we feel when we train, how we leave the dojo feeling energized and happy and stress-free. And he was talking to the students about how amazing it is that when you're training, you are in the moment. Training forces you to be in the moment, so you're not thinking about the past or the future. You're not thinking about the issues and problems that we all have outside of the dojo. We are fully in the moment and living every second to its fullest. And that's what it means to be a tatsujin. That's what it means in the dojo to be a black belt, is someone who can focus on the moment and not concentrate too much on the past and the future where we're unsure of things. And how much, my gosh, we spend hours and hours and hours a week trying to train to be a little bit better than we were yesterday. Always trying to reach perfection and never finding it, but finding out our weaknesses. Martial art training in my life has saved my life more than I can tell you. It has saved me from sadness and anger and depression and you name it, this has kept me alive over many, many decades now. So for me, this has always been a huge priority, so there it is. And this, if you are actively training, this is what it means to you. When you start fresh and you're a brand new practitioner, you feel great. Your first month, you are at the dojo all the time. You're training in whatever martial art that you do. You're excited to go to class and you kind of tell the world you're going to go train, you tell your family, your friends, no, I can't go out Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday night, I have to train at my dojo, I, want, I love this, I want to learn, I want to become a martial artist and a black belt, I want to learn all the secrets, whatever it is. So we prioritize that, there it is. And every week that's strong. And then, my gosh, after a couple months you start to realize how darn hard this is how it's not a fantasy that you saw on television or in movies or in anime. It really is tough work. It takes tremendous effort, and this is a privilege to train in the martial arts. Back in the day, hundreds of years ago, you had to be very rich and wealthy to do this. If you were a poor person, you couldn't learn this unless they happened to be your father or your uncle. Otherwise, you're out of luck. Nowadays, we can choose to train. It just takes effort and time and money, and all of us have all of those in equal measure most of the time. So what we tend to do though is once that we've done something for a couple months and the luster wears off and we start to get hurt and we start to go home with bruises and we start to have our ego bruised and we realize just how tough this is and how many classes you have to come to to get good and we fall down a thousand times. All these things happen. And here's the rest of our life, see? These are equal measures of time. You and I have the same amount of time. Every single person watching this video has the exact same amount of time, same amount of minutes and seconds in the day. But what do we do with our time? How do we prioritize it? Now for me, of course, being a full-time teacher, this takes up about 50 to 60 hours a week. But what does your training take? How long are your classes at your particular dojo or training hall? I'm guessing one, maybe two hours max, maybe once or twice a week. So there you go, that's, that's our training time. But this is family time and it's not unimportant, it's extremely important. So my family time, where I used to train, and I would be like this, you know, I'd have family time of course, but then I'd have some training time, a couple hours a week. This is about, that's about 
Uh, two hours a week is right about there, see? My family's still my number one priority. Of course, I have a job, too. If I have a full-time job, that's 40 hours a week. My gosh, that's really important. How am I going to pay for my training if I don't have a job? So if I'm lazy and I don't have a job, forget that. So here's our work and our job and our family life. Very important. And there's our training right there. We can still maintain it while doing these two. But then other things come into our life. Oh my gosh. Here come the unforeseen things when I'm actively training and I hurt my knee. Boom, there's injury. Uh-oh, I have the flu. There's sickness, corona fear. There's another thing. So these are unpredictable factors that will hit our life when we least expect it. You just get hit like a shuriken in the heart. You were doing well, you were coming to your classes, getting your new belts, really building up a momentum of accomplishment, and bang, something happens. You hurt your shoulder, you pull your back out, you break your foot, whatever it is. We have a student right now, she has knee surgery, uh, just had it two weeks ago. She's already back in the dojo taking notes. She can't train. But she's a legend, she's a warrior. She comes in and watches class and takes notes because she doesn't want to lose what she's gained, her momentum. Even though she can't physically train, she mentally trains. So here it is, she's got that in a high priority in her life. Even when all this other stuff happens, it's still there. Here comes leisure time. How many dozens of hours a week do we spend watching television, staring at computer screens? God, that's five right there. Playing video games, watching Twitch, watching YouTube, sitting on the couch. Here's five for sleeping because we spend most of our life sleeping in bed. Here's eating. Here's spending time on the toilet. Here's shower time and bath time. Here's cleaning your house, taking care of the kids, taking care of the dog. By the time you can think about it, your training is buried. Where is my training? Where's my happiness? Where's my joy? It was such a high priority. It used to be here. It used to be right near the top. Family, work, leisure time, training. This is my time so that I can defend myself and my family. If I expect things to change, I need this because I'm not happy with a lot of this. I don't want to spend time watching television, watching movies. I want to do it. I want to experience it rather than have it theoretical through a 2D screen. So why is it that we take this and we bury it? Is it poor time management? You can argue that, but then your teacher says, that's an excuse. You have to put this up here somewhere. This has got to be near the top. You're never going to master anything in your life if you only do it for one month and then you let it disappear. And everyone out there experiences this with all kinds of stuff in our life. This can represent anything. So use this as an analogy. And remember, it's going to get buried. It's going to go back in life. We're going to have things that are going to take over. And the important thing that used to give us such joy, you come to the dojo all stressed and scared and mad about the world, and you leave here happy, stress-free, powerful and empowered. And how this has saved our life from sadness, fear, and depression. This is what took us out of it. And yet, after three months, many people, oh, there they go. I talk to dojo owners all over the world, and they say the same thing. They quit. They quit. This used to be something I did five, ten years ago. I took Taekwondo for three months, got my purple belt. Look at me now. I can still fight. B.S. You can't fight. This is a diminishing skill. The minute that you stop training, uh-oh, it starts to get lost. See? Keep your gold, keep your yellow showing. Keep training. Keep your eyes on your goal and your prize. It's amazing how many lies and excuses we as human beings will come up with to let it go and to bury our dream and our hope. We all have these issues. We all have injury. We all have problems in our life. We all get sad and depressed and all this stuff. But my gosh, what can we use to fix it? Here's one way, martial arts. And there are several others I can think of that are just as good. So our motto is find this and keep it near the top. Keep it near the top, at least allow some to show. Yes, there'll be times when I need to focus on my family and my job more than the martial arts, but if I don't come in, I will quit. And then it's just something you used to do.
Good luck, my friends. I wish you the best. I wish you to keep your gold showing. Keep this near the top and watch the benefits you will reap from it. It's consistency, it's effort, and that's what will bring us mastery and happiness. We'll see you next time.